You're successful, disciplined, respected. But here's the part no one sees. You can't stop. Because the moment you slow down, the anxiety creeps in. Restlessness, guilt, emotional noise you can't quite name. What if your drive to achieve isn't just ambition, but your brain's way of outrunning something deeper? Welcome to Psychiatry Simplified. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, consultant, psychiatrist, and educator. Today, we're talking about the kind of ADHD that doesn't look like ADHD, especially in high-performing professionals. The common view? ADHD means distractibility, hyperactivity, and disorganization. But in many adults, especially high achievers, it hides behind structure, control, and overachievement. As a clinician, I've seen it repeatedly. Doctors, lawyers, creatives, entrepreneurs, who spend decades managing their symptoms with productivity without even knowing it. In this video, we'll explore why some people use work to regulate their nervous system, how emotional discomfort gets channeled into achievement, and why recognizing this pattern is the key to avoiding burnout and reclaiming joy. So let's start off with the mask of success. How many times have you heard, you don't look like you have ADHD, you're structured, you meet deadlines, you're successful, but inside, you procrastinate until panic fuels you. You feel overwhelmed by simple admin. You can't rest unless it's earned. You hate holidays because they feel empty. This is achievement masquerading as avoidance, where success is derived from pressure, not from peace. So let's go deeper and get scientific for a bit. ADHD isn't just about attention, it's about regulation. The prefrontal cortex, your brain's CEO if you want to think about it that way, struggles to maintain focus, initiate tasks, and modulate effort. Why? Because of disrupted dopamine signaling in both mesolimbic, the emotional pathways, and mesocortical, the cognitive pathways. Your brain starts chasing urgency, novelty, and stimulation. That's why you leave things to the last minute. The panic becomes the reward. This is called delay aversion, discomfort with low stimulation states, which means your brain avoids anything that doesn't offer immediate reward or stimulation. But this is something we don't think about. ADHD isn't just about focus, it's about feeling. Rejection, shame, criticism, they don't just sting, they destabilize. To avoid these, you develop perfectionistic traits. Maybe people-pleasing traits or become a machine. As long as you're productive, you don't have to feel the chaos underneath. But here's the paradox. Achievement becomes your drug. It soothes the restlessness. It numbs the emotional pain. And when you stop, you don't feel peace. You feel guilt, irritability, agitation, emptiness, a deep sense of not enoughness. It's not laziness, it's withdrawal. Because achievement isn't joy, it's about control. So now if we go back and think about it, ADHD and arousal dysregulation leads to a drive that never ends. ADHD is also a disorder of arousal regulation. Your body can't match its state to the demand. When you're supposed to rest, you're wired. When you need energy, you're flat. That's why so many high achievers with ADHD run at 120% because slowing down isn't relaxing, it's uncomfortable. So what do you do? You override it, push harder and perform more. Because stopping means feeling and that's terrifying. Work therefore becomes a way to self-medicate through stimulation. Over time, this becomes chronic activation. It's what we call allostatic load, the wear and tear from managing life's demands. And it's not always negative. Sometimes success itself increases the load. High expectations, bigger goals, more risk. Even positive striving is allostatic load. Every raised expectation is a prediction and the body ramps up to meet it. Here's something we don't pay a lot of attention to. The brain is about prediction. All it wants to do is to meet prediction and outcome. So when we raise our expectations, that's D1 receptor stimulation. Good at the start, fueling focus and drive. But what if expectations keep rising? Now you're running on constant D1 stimulation and that leads to prefrontal cortex fatigue. That's the literal rat race, a brain wired for achievement burning out from overactivation. 
So this is where we enter into the burnout paradox, when success can break you. We're wired for activity, no doubt, to pursue, to strive. But the brain is also wired for prediction match, that sweet spot where what we expect aligns with what happens. That's satisfaction. That's peace. But when our predictions outpace our capacity, we generate constant mismatch. And mismatch is equal to chronic arousal. So here's the paradox. We chase success for happiness, but end up too activated to enjoy it. True success is actually an expectation outcome match. You see, this ADHD pattern is especially common in women. Why? Because they mask. They internalize their struggles. They're labeled moody, emotional, or highly strung. They get missed by diagnostic systems focused on boys who bounce off walls. So what's happening inside? Exactly the same dysregulation, only quieter and therefore often overlooked. So let's link this all together. Shame, overwork and the loop. Even when you succeed, it's never enough because your fuel wasn't joy, it was fear. Fear of letting people down, failing, being exposed. This creates a loop. Shame leads to overwork, which leads to burnout, which then leads to shame again. It's not drive, it's emotional survival. So what now? If any of this sounds familiar, here's the first step. Stop seeing your exhaustion as weakness. Start seeing it as a signal. A signal that your brain's been running on emergency power for years. Your brain has been in survival mode for years. Real change comes from awareness and sometimes the need to carry out an assessment, a clinical assessment. Two, psychoeducation. Three, cognitive strategies. And yes, sometimes medication to regulate dopamine and arousal. But most of all, from letting go of the belief that your worth is equal to your output. Because achievement means nothing if it costs us our peace. So let me summarize all of this for you. Achievement is a beautiful thing when it comes from alignment, not avoidance. When it comes from prediction outcome match. But if your success feels like it's crushing you, it might be time to pause and think. Not to stop, but to understand. If this resonated, hit the like and subscribe button. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, and this is Psychiatry Simplified. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay curious. Bye-bye.